before this video starts, there are a couple of things I want to say really, really quickly. Firstly, um, this isn't going to be like a proper benchmarking video. If you want like really heavy proper benchmarks, I'm going to link a video in the description. Um, it'll be the very first thing there. This video, although like shows a couple of games, what I basically found was that it performs like any other PC with a 2060 and a 94, an i5 9400. Um, so just check that video out. It's a performance thing of a i5 9400 and a RTX 2060 so you'll get roughly the same numbers as I got on this and also I want to apologize to anyone um, who got offended by me not knowing who Fison are and not knowing who the power supply manufacturer are and I got multiple comments of people being like oh my god I can't believe you didn't recognize the Zotac logo so sorry I guess I don't know here's the video what is up guys, how are you doing? So here's the deal. Um, we now have the Aldi Gaming PC up here. Uh, you may have noticed if you're one of the eagle-eyed viewers, if I move this way, that screen and that screen have my screensaver and that one doesn't because this one isn't the same PC as those two. Those two were my personal PC, these two here. And then this one is the Aldi Gaming PC. So come a little bit closer and let's take a look at what's happening on here. Just really quickly before you do that though, I want to mention that the setup process was alright, like it was just a standard window setup process, and in terms of bloatware, the only thing that was on there uh, was some McAfee antivirus software, so it was like one piece, which is significantly better than you get from most places. There's also a support app that's installed, uh, but calling that an app is a bit of a stretch. I'll show you why in a minute. It's basically just a list of phone numbers and addresses. So I started by opening up CPU-Z and Crystal Disk Info just to take a look at the SSD and the motherboard, as we discussed previously, because it was quite hard to tell what they were due to the lack of markings. Um, and I've also got Magnifier open here, so hopefully if there's something you can't see very well, we can just use this. There you go, look at this. Um, so according to CPU-Z, this is, as expected, a Intel Core i5-9400. Here's what we want though, the motherboard is a median B360H4-EM, meaning median make their own motherboards, and this is one of them. It's running a BIOS dated June of 2019, meaning it's like four months old, five, it, f yeah, four and a bit months old, which means it's actually pretty recent, which is interesting. It's a B360 motherboard, meaning it's probably quite cheap. I'd estimate it around sort of 30 to 40 pounds. We'll look at the specific model and find out. It's a, it's a mini ITX motherboard. We know that much. Memory is DDR4, there's 16 gigabytes of it as expected. It's running at 2666. That's the number I'm thinking of. Um, there we go, there it is confirmed. It's as expected, Samsung modules. Um, and that's like, luckily all of this is in line of what we were expecting and seems relatively reasonable. This here confirms that it's a Zotac RTX 2060 as well, which is great, and because nothing's currently happening, the core and memory clocks are quite low. When we open up Crystal Disk Info, you see again, it's just a standard SSD, like it's a FISO on one terabyte SSD. There's a number here, we'll give that a search. Uh, there's a serial number, and as expected, it's got a power on count of 12, which feels about right, like I've powered it on a couple of times just installing Windows and, uh, well not installing Windows, but setting up Windows and letting all the updates run. Um, and a power on time of about six hours, which again lines up to roughly my use case, um, or usage I should say. So it looks relatively fine. Typing that motherboard version information into Google gives us these images of what is ostensibly our motherboard. Uh, thanks to Mr. Memory, we can see here that again, it's it's just a median manufactured B360 board, kind of as expected. It's it's reasonably like looking. Um, let's see if we can find any pricing. I feel like it will be really hard to get a hold of. Most of the places it's mentioned is by memory manufacturers certifying their memory for usage with the motherboard as opposed to people selling the motherboard. Uh, but if we try typing it into, let's say, like Amazon or eBay, let's see what comes up. Quite unsurprisingly, you kind of try skimming through the internet and you can't really find anything on this motherboard. It's A, relatively new by the looks of it, and B, the really long and random model number means that it's quite hard to find. All I can find here whenever you only search for name is just memory modules that work with it. And with it being an Intel B360 board, they all, all only got up to 2666 megahertz, um, 
which, I mean, is fine, but you know, you can get 3200 for roughly the same speed. That's a thing we'll get back to in a minute though. In terms of the storage, it's almost of no surprise that the only way to find the information is on a German website, because again, median. Uh, this is a website called Hardware Inside. It's a German publication, but they have this interesting image from Tom's Hardware, which shows the performance of the Fison E8 reference design, which would be the same controller, um, running at approximately 400 megabytes per second. Not amazing, but definitely not terrible. Well, it is, it, well, it's, it's not that great, actually, now that I think about it. These are all roughly the same storage, and um, uh, there are only two that perform lower than this. Interestingly, the Western Digital Black PCIe and the Intel SSD 600P. Um, none of those three, and neither does the ADATA SX 8000, now that I think about it, none of those have any cache. They all write directly to storage, um, and that makes a massive difference for something like an SSD. You want it with some amount of cache. Um, so that's a bit of an issue. It's also not saturating um, SATA, not what it would be because it's a PCIe SSD, so you know, we want, we want all the performances. You know what I will say, that quick swap uh, hard drive bay is really useful for getting a drive in for running some gaming benchmarks because I can just whoosh, plop it in. Uh, so let's get some games going. Since every single game known to man seems to want a Steam update right now, probably because I haven't used a hard drive in about six months, uh, it's just been lying around. I upgraded from a hard drive to a solid state for my personal rig, and um, that means I've got a hard drive full of games just sitting around. Um, if we close down Steam for a moment, we've upgraded, we've updated like five or six games, it's definitely enough. Um, I first want to run Cinebench really quickly. So if we just close everything down, um, I have pre-installed it because I am prepared-ish. Uh, we're only going to run the, the the full one. We're not going to run the single core one. I have the numbers for the single core one, um, but I just want to run this currently just for the sake of like visually showing you how it looks. Like because it's six cores and six threads, you'll notice there are only six squares highlighted at any given moment. Uh, that's what each core is working on. Um, and we'd expect this to come in at around 2400, um, sort of the 23, 24 range, um, probably closer to, to 23, even 24. Because it's six cores and doesn't have any hyper-threading, like it's fine, but for heavily multi-threaded tasks like this Cinebench is, it just doesn't quite blaze through it. Like it's fine, but it's not great. And we'll see that when we get the score, whenever we get the score. Right, so it's about to complete. Let's see how it does. 2400 exactly. That's, huh, look at that. That's slightly higher than expected, and that's great. Um, let's, oh, I should have been running a temperature check as we ran that, shouldn't I? Um, for what it's worth, like this PC is currently sat right, right there, as I keep alluding to. Um, and my personal rig is sat just there. Um, and the Aldi PC is almost effectively silent. It is actually very quiet. Um, now, I ran Cinebench on my personal rig just before this. So if I move the dongle, this is the, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing, this is the dongle I use for, hang on, there we go. This is the dongle I use for um, my keyboard and mouse. Um, because they are both wireless, which you may have seen if you saw part one of this trilogy. If you haven't yet, go check that out. It's here, go do it. Um, so if we do this, you can see I ran it on here um, like two seconds ago, and this scored 3,757 points. That's roughly 50% faster, and that's because even though per core it's slower with Cloudy getting 392 and the LDPC getting 421. It doesn't matter that it's slightly slower because it has two more cores. And that means if you're doing something that's heavily multi-threaded, Ryzen makes way more sense. And if you're doing something that's heavily single-threaded, a bit like gaming, then fewer, faster cores make sense. This is a first-gen Ryzen chip. This is a 1700X. A 3600, as we'll get to in a bit, makes more sense because per core it's faster and it has multi-threading, which means it's faster overall as well, for roughly the same price. Interesting in the testing runs, my personal PC got actually a bit better. It got 3806 instead of 3757, which makes it just over 50% faster across all cores. 
sort of that out of the way, let's open Steam back up. What I will say is nice is because I logged into my Microsoft account, things like my background and the color of the bar there, which is in Snappy Deck Blue, all synced across, which is really nice. We're gonna close that and I'm gonna go for Doom. Now, oh no. Doom also has an update. Every single game has an update, god damn it. I should mention normally what I'd do is I'd play sound for these games. However, um, because the PC motherboard doesn't have an optical audio out, um, I can't play to my soundbar and the only sound is coming through the speakers built into this monitor and they are truly atrocious. So trust me when I say I'm doing you a favor by not playing any sound. Uh, we're just gonna get into a quick campaign and see how it looks. But first, we will make sure all the graphic settings. With no enemies around, we're currently running at around 120 frames a second. Oh, that was a weird hiccup. We're currently running at around 120 to 150 frames a second, um, which is nice. Let's see what happens when we get to some baddies though. Come on baddies. Well, oh, hang on, that was gunshot. There we go, get over here. So we're, we're actually sticking it around. Yeah, like that, that sort of 150 mark. What I will say is the PC has gotten noticeably louder. Um, oh God, come on. Um, I can now actually hear it over the sound of my other PC. Um, it's definitely louder, but now it's now that we're on an indoor area, it's actually running at closer to 200 frames per second. Um, so kind of, as I said, for, for 1080p gaming, this 2060 really is great. Oh, give me, a, give me a chest thing. Oh, thanks for your chest thing. So that's, that's due. Um, around 200 frames per second. What I will say is this is really kicked up in terms of sound. Like it really has definitely gotten that little bit louder. Let's, let's try a different game and I know what to go for. So this is Tomb Raider once again running at 1080p on ultra settings. Tomb Raider is different because it actually has an ultimate. Uh, how do I get down? There we go. Oh, wait, what? No. <laughs> uh, Tomb Raider is different because it actually has an ultimate setting. Um, if you wanted to, I don't know how to, can, can you not? Oh God, I figured it out and then I died. It's different because it also has an ultimate setting for graphics, um, but since we're doing sort of all, all ultra, um, I, I felt like that would be appropriate. I've just left it as it was, uh, just set it to ultra, so I think it has some anti-aliasing um, by default, but we'll, we'll live. Oh, hang on. She's actually not grabbing onto the bars right now. She's grabbing on the, to the air just below the bars. You won't be able to see it, um, but it's hilarious. She's actually grabbing on just just under the bars, the animations aren't quite in sync with the, the bars for some reason. What I will say is the Tomb Raider games are absolutely gorgeous, um, both this and the new ones. This is the first of the, the trilogy and as such it's the less good looking one, but even this is a visually stunning game. It looks amazing and they do a really good job in this scene of really, really making you realise just how tall up you are that tower. Um, really, really gets your fear of heights going, look at that, isn't that ridiculous? Just that like, oh no, not all of the stuff. If only someone would light it on fire. Right, okay, so let's see what that's doing for the temps. We're running at 80 degrees GPU temperature and the moment we tab out, it's already dropped about 10 degrees Celsius. Um, just in case you're wondering how that is. So it is, it is really pushing this thing. Um, there we go, That's, that might be slightly easier to see. So yeah, 82, 83 degrees um, is, is hitting the thermal ceiling. Um, but, and it's just, I assume, would be underclocking a touch. However, it's still running at like 200 frames a second. Um, so if you're doing something like this and you're playing something like Tomb Raider, which is more of a story game than it is like a quick reactions game, what I personally would suggest is to turn on V-Sync um, and just have a smoother experience overall um, as well as using your GPU a bit less um, because if you're running a 60 hertz monitor or even a 120 hertz monitor um, it's not running at 
200 frames a second, it's running at 120. Um, so this RTX 2060 is plenty powerful. Okay, so I also want to try some Rocket League. In this case, we have anti-aliasing off, render detail set to custom, because although I was on high quality, I turned off motion blur. Motion blur is terrible, you should always turn it off. Um, but otherwise, it's on high quality, along with render quality is also on high quality. That's the word quality way too much. Let's get into a game really quickly. I have a feeling I'm gonna hit 250 and just stay there um, because Rocket League isn't a particularly demanding game. Um, oh, this looks like a fun situation. And oh look, absolutely zero surprise. We've hit 250 and we're locked at 250. It's almost like this RTX 2060 is more than plenty for Rocket League. There's one more game I want to try though. Now this game, this, might be one step too far for the RTX 2060. This is Robot Arena 2 with the Robot Wars mod. This is one of my favorite games and my first ever video on YouTube back in 2011, eight years ago, was on Robot Arena 2. Uh, so let's play a quick game of this. It's gonna end terribly, I can tell you that much right now. Um, but if we get that Robot Wars Arena, if we pull out, which robot do we want? Oh, who do I want to be? Uh, Let's do Last Rites versus, uh, who, who's good? Uh, oh, you know what? Let's go for Big Nipper. This is honestly just because I felt like playing Robot Arena for a second. Robot Arena was, Robot Arena 2 was one of my favorite games growing up. Um, ooh, that's the back button. Um, and as a massive Robot Wars fan, it still is to this day. This is probably running at some kind of ridiculous frame rate. Uh, as you can tell, the physics isn't that good, um, but it's fine. I love it regardless. So all in all, like it gets a bit, it gets a bit loud under load. However, it can handle pretty much any game you throw at it at ultra settings and be completely fine. So it's a decent deal. So with it performing roughly how you'd expect for a PC with a 9400 and a RTX 2060, this is an all right value. However, you can get better. We, I got into this conversation with one of the comments in the previous video, um, or to the part two of this part three part thing. Uh, point being, we got into a discussion that it's not a great deal. Like it's, it's an okay deal, but it feels a bit like a company flogging any spare parts. And I do kind of understand that sentiment. You can you could have used a 2060 Super. Um, the 9400 is a generation old at this point, and even if it wasn't, there's a 9400F, which may even make more sense for something like this, because the F doesn't have graphics and is 50 pounds cheaper, so you could have saved some money there. So they're just almost getting rid of old stock. However, this is, this is what we came up with for a similar budget, but it is worth mentioning that you have to build this yourself and it doesn't come with an SD card slot, a DVD drive, or that removable, that like quick remove hard drive slot. Like it's, it's in terms of price to performance, it's significantly better. But if you really value those features, including the fact that it comes pre-built and with Windows pre-installed, then actually this is an all right deal. And that's important because at the end of the day, this isn't aimed for people like me, people who enjoy building PCs and working on them. This is designed for someone who's buying a PC for a kid or is just wanting a PC for being able to game on. Like people want PCs just to use as opposed to something they're building and nurturing. And in theory, if this had a better power supply, you'd be able to just plop this down and use it for a long period of time with no issues whatsoever. Okay, so here I have the PC I put together on pcpartbicker.co.uk. Um, this, the price of this comes in at 960 pounds and 38 pence, which actually means that it's ever so slightly cheaper than what I paid for this, is it? Oh no, maybe it's slightly more, because um, postage was like six pounds. So I paid 955-ish for the LD PC. I don't know why I'm pointing to it, like you can see it pay 950-ish for this. This is like five to 10 pounds more. And if you wait for a decent deal, you'll probably get it even cheaper. And some of these parts uh, are from the same vendor, but don't have like the postage, like the postage is applied more than once. Uh, so you will actually probably end up paying closer to 950. This is basically the same price. Also comes with Windows 10, but no peripherals as this PC came with. Um, 
I'll, we'll go through it and I'll like explain part by part why I picked it, as well as some other potential alternatives, because the CPU specifically is one where I put in one, but there were two very easy to make options. So in terms of CPU, in this case, I did go for the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. It's a six core, 12 thread processor that core for core is about, I think it's like six or 7% faster. Um, and because it has not hyper-threading, simultaneous multi-threading, because hyper-threading is an Intel thing, um, it performs across all cores at about 40 to 50% faster. Now that's great uh, if you're doing specifically gaming, however, if you're going for like overall raw CPU performance, if you're doing something like streaming, for example, as well as gaming, or if you're doing any video editing, instead of the 3600, I personally would actually suggest the 2700X. It's a generation older, however, it comes with eight cores and 16 threads. So even though it's slightly slower per core, the the fact it has two more cores and four more threads means that if you're doing something that's heavily multi-threaded, it's significantly faster. And that's why I also went for a B450 board, partially because B550 doesn't exist yet, and partially because this is like a relatively averagely priced B450 board. It's ASRock. I've had multiple ASRock motherboards in the past and they've all served me quite well. Uh, so B450 board. 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200 memory. Third generation Ryzen is significantly less dependent on memory speed than second generation Ryzen is, but it's always good to get slightly quicker if possible. And in this case, the 3200 stuff was basically the same price as the 2666 stuff. Um, so you always go for that. The, the number one solid upgrade we made to this PC, however, is the storage. So as well as a one terabyte Intel 660p M.2 NVMe SSD, I also had managed to sort of wrangle some budget by saving money on bits like the CPU to get a Seagate Barracuda compute two terabyte hard drive for all of your games and any random programs you want. If you're doing any video editing whatsoever, it's also good to have as much storage as possible spare just to dump footage. Like I have, how much storage is in cloudy right now? I wanna say like, 15 terabytes maybe, like it's some ridiculous amount of storage. So three terabytes, one terabyte solid, two terabytes hard drive, it's quite hard to go wrong. The graphics card, however, was the one which for me was the toughest to figure out. You can go for something like an RTX 2060 Super, uh, which is about 15% faster than a regular 2060 and costs about that much, like it's around the 300 pound mark, this is 330, but I went, as you can see here, for a Radeon RX 5700. It's just that little bit faster than a 2060 Super and also a little bit cheaper whilst doing so. If you really wanted to stretch it, you might even suggest the 5700 XT. They are both great for 1440p gaming and much like the 2060 are great for 1080p. I'd argue both the 2060 and the RX 5700 are a point where we will have to get some pretty drastic changes in graphics or some really massive overhaul for them to become not good at 1080p gaming. They are so good currently that they run effectively everything on Ultra at 60 frames a second. And if you want higher refresh rate gaming, um, just bump down the details a bit. Plus games like Rocket League and CSGO where you do want those high frame rates, they're relatively, they're relatively light on the GPU, so this will really blaze through it. In terms of a case, we went for the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. It's a micro ATX case. The motherboard is also micro ATX. I'm not sure if I said that. Um, the reason we went for that is because it's a pretty similar form factor to, to the, again, I'm pointing like you can see it, but you can't. Um, however, it has this massive acrylic side panel that looks gorgeous. You can see into the PC, and it also has this really nice mesh front that's easy to sort of rip off, and it's it's magnetic. You're not actually ripping it off, you're just taking it off a bit dramatically, if we're honest. Um, it makes it really easy to clean. There's a bunch of mounting holes on the front, and it's great. Um, one thing I did find weird about this Aldi PC, actually, let me bring up on the desk and show you. Um, it just does this really weird thing where I felt like something was off with it and I couldn't tell what. And I realized what it is, is that the motherboard for whatever reason is mounted backwards. If you look at Cloudy or basically any case on the PC market, you'll see that the window is on the left hand side of the case. Whereas for whatever reason, this is mounted backwards. So it's actually mounted on the left hand side. And so if it were to have a window, which it doesn't, it would be on the right hand side of a PC case. It's just one of those weird quirks of this Aldi PC, which doesn't make it worse, but makes it just a bit weird.